Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike, and I'm excited to share another Divi tutorial with you. My goal here is to make learning Divi as straightforward as possible. Today we want to have a look at something that's been released recently, and that is this thing called the Loop Builder. Prior to this, I made a video on the thing that we were most excited about previously was the Flexbox. And uh, that came, and that went, because once they dropped this Loop Builder, I if you're a WordPress user that's ever been frustrated about how you can reorganize different things, this is the one that we really need to look at. Because when you actually build out, let me have a look. Let's just jump into this. If you don't mind, just also hit that like button before we get started. All right, so let's have a look at this. Let's go add a new page here. And in this new page, I just want to say, uh, working with the loop builder. Can't reach my keyboard. Okay, so we're working with a loop builder. Let's hit the busy working with the Divi builder, and that'll open up for us. So once that's opened up, we can then just go and add in a row. So in this row, I just want to add in a single one there, and I want to add in, let's say, uh, where is it? A blog. Is it a blog? Yeah. Okay, let's take a blog. And we say this blog, let's go to design, we want to go layout, and let's make this grid. Okay, so there we go. Looks quite cool, right? But now the problem comes in is that if you want to edit this, I mean, let me know in the comments below if this is something that you've struggled with or is it just me? But whenever you create this, you're stuck to this layout. You have the featured image at the top over here, and then you're followed by this as your, uh, uh, your post title. Then you have in all of your meta tags, as well as your category, and then the excerpt. Okay, you're quite limited as to what you can change here. Like you can't change it up. You can't really move, uh, say I want my dates at the top here. Um, I wanna take, you can take this away. That's no problem. Um, I think you do that in content and you can come in here, elements. And over here, okay, sure. You can take away the date. You can take away the author. Okay, fair enough. But you cannot change how it looks and how it presents on the front end here. And for me, that's that's always been a bit of a, a drawback. And um, so today now, I wanna have a look and see this loop feature, if this is something that we can use to overcome this. So let's just jump right in. Don't stop holding out here, but let's go see if we could do it. So we're just gonna add in a column over here. And then what we wanna do is, I'm gonna leave out the images for now, but you can also use the image. What I want to do is I want to add in a text module and then I want to add in a text module and I'm pretty sure you know what's going to come next. Maybe one more text module. All right, so we have these three text modules set up over here. Now what we want to do is we want to actually have this loop. So let's jump into our row settings and let's go to the column. Once we hit the column over here, we come down to loop and then we want to loop this element. So just click that and you can see it just goes crazy. <laughs> All right, so it's it's literally got one, two, three, four, five, so 10, 15. So if you scroll down, it's gonna have you at 10 posts per page. Now it's showing so many because remember we got three different each time. So let's now go and have a look, what can we do? Right, so we've, we've set up that loop, right? So that means it's gonna loop across. Now if I select the first one here and I come to the side here and I say I want to insert dynamic content and I click on that, I now have access to all of these different ones that they have here. So sorry, let's back up a little bit here and let's just jump back into that loop. So the loop post type, I've got a query type, I've got this post type here and post type here I'm putting, I want posts, right? You can have other options like media, projects and that but I just want to have my posts now because I want to do this as a, a blog layout. And then you can also include like only select categories and so on and so on, exclude. You can include posts with specific terms. So put in only ones in the WordPress category, for instance, and you exclude with specific ones. Maybe I don't want um, product updates and I, I exclude those. You can even include only specific posts, right? And exclude specific posts and so on and so on. So it's all pretty much done. The only other one you probably need is the offset here. That is usually if I've 
uh, used some blog posts somewhere before. Like I, maybe I have a featured image or a featured slider, post slider at the top, and I'm showing three blog posts then. Then the next one, I would start from the next one over here. So say start from post uh, number four onwards and so on and so on. Okay, so we have selected here posts. So now if we jump back into here and we come here, it's then going to access those posts. So that's why we see here loop, post, custom field, post title, exit, everything to do with the posts because we selected post. So what I want to have is I first want to have my publish date. And <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Perfectly lined up for me. Each one of my posts that I have here. You can then also put in before afters over here. So I'm just going to say apply for that right now. And let's give us a little bit of a design. So um, content, let's give us a background. Um, let's give it a, um, okay, give it a red background, why not? And then jump into design, text. Let's make this text, uh, nice. Okay, let's make it that one there. <laughs> and we wanna make this bold and then Spacing, let's push this from the left a little bit. Let's push it maybe 20 pixels. Okay, and then border, let's just give this maybe 12. Okay, so there we have it. Maybe our spacing, we just wanna give this a little bit top and bottom, two. Okay, so we've got just a little bit of spacing there. All right, so the next one that we have is we can jump in here and we can say we wanna choose the next one and dynamic content we want to add in the post title all right now this is the important part is once you've added in the post title there you have this before and after now what is this before and after this is an important thing to have a look at let's just go in here and see if we have one okay mm. let's go to my one just jump in here quickly and you can see here we have the different titles. If I inspect this, you can see here that each one of these titles are actually put as an H4, right? They're not just regular titles. Now, why do we want an H4 or an H3 is probably even better. We want to put that as such because if SEO, if anybody, any of the crawlers come and check out your website, you want to make sure that your titles stand out as titles and not just another text module. So for me is I would always make these ones either an H3 or an H4. So to do so, all we do is we come here and we just put in H3. And after we wanna make sure we close that off, we just put H3 again with that tag over there. And then that'll make these stand out quite nicely. They're now as a title. And if we say apply, they're now stay as an H3 title. So if we come into design, we'll go to heading text, H3, and then we'll make the changes for it over here. So you can see as I change it there, it's actually being reflected. Okay, so that's done. All right, so far, so good. <laughs> Let's have a look. We jump into the last one, and I'm sure you could have guessed this would be our exit. All right, so we select exit over there, and we say, now this is quite cool as well. You can also put it before and after, loop position, but you can put in a number of words. So how many words do you want it to show? Let's say 12. Ha, <laughs> so cool, look at that. All right, then you can say read more text. Now what read more text is, is you see you've got this ellipsis over here on each one of the blog posts. That's because it's read more. So you could go the old boring read, ooh, read, read more, or um, you could go get educated or whatever it is you want to put in there. For now, I'm just gonna leave it with the ellipsis. And then over here, you can just apply. Now, the beautiful part of this is I'm actually able to access this entirely with regards to my um, design. So it gives me complete freedom and of creativity that I can now go, I'm not longer stuck to just what they give me in that blog module. I'm actually got complete freedom as to how I wanna build my layout. All right, so then the next thing, oh, we could also put in a category if you wanted. Well, let's do that, so just so that we can see how easy it is. Now if I come here and I click this add new module, 
and I say I want another text module. Click text. It's going to add in all of that, all that nonsense. We come here and we just select we want our dynamic content. And which dynamic content do we want? Well, we want post terms. Is it post terms? Yeah. There you go. I don't know why it's called post terms. Why can't they call it categories? Anyways, there we have our titles. So I don't know why this is called baby. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. All right, but now this we can go and style as well. So I'm just going to apply that and it comes to background and choose a background color. Let's make this one green. All right, I'm not going to win any design awards today, but we can just apply the same things that we did earlier. Make this 20 and this one two and two. All right, it's border. We just give that 12 and there we go. We can also make it bold if we want and all that. Now, the other thing is we can also, if you want, still rearrange this so you can put it wherever you want it. See, that's what I mean is you've got complete freedom. Now, the other thing that you have is that this can be coupled and connected with your Flexbox styling. So how can we do that? Well, let's jump back in here into our row. And I'm just trying to think which one would it be here. I think we're going to do it in the row itself. So let's go layout, flex, and let's make this 20 and 20. This one, both pixels, just so that they're quite close together. Okay, our row is at a row at the moment, but maybe what we want to do is we want to give it a wrap. Okay, so it's wrapping. Now, remember when we initially created this, we created it as a single column row. That's why we are getting it now listed one above the other. So to overcome that, what we can do is we come to content and we go into the column. And then in the column, we go to design, we go to sizing. And then instead of full width over here, we just select, let's go with a third. So we're gonna throw, show three next to each other. There we go. So we have three next to each other showing as they should. All right, so that is how you can quite easily build out a blog layout using the new loop builder. Now, this is all fun and well, but what happens if I have 50 blog posts instead of five? You can't tell me that I'm gonna list 50 blog posts going all the way down here. Well, let's go ahead and have a look at this. So let's jump back into our column. Let's go to the loop. So the loop at the bottom here asks us how many posts we wanna show per page. So I want to show two. I only want two. Okay, so there we go. We have two per page. Now, because there's only two, not four, I probably also want to change the size. So let's go design, let's go uh, sizing, and let's make this half. Where's half, half? There we go, half. All right, so I have half now here, two posts per page. Now, how am I gonna access the other pages, or the other posts, shall I say? That's quite easy because Divi has thought about that. Well, Divi, Elegant Themes has thought about that. And so if I hit this here and I go add in another row, and then for, as a module, I scroll down and I select pagination. There we go. All right, so we have pagination and it goes to the Divi mobile sticky menu. Well, that's not what we want. We want it to go between the, the posts. All right, so that's quite simple. It's just we've added it, but we never told it what we are adding it to. So if I select it here now and I come to the right, you see here we have target, and then it's got target loop. So what do I want to target? I want to target that column. And now that you see that I'm targeting the column, I already get the next. All right, so let's see if that works. I'm gonna hit save draft here, and then I'm just gonna hit preview. There we have our text of our posts being listed in our blog layout. And if I hit next over here, there we go. We've got the next ones. And there's the first one, the very first post that I uploaded and so on and so on. We can also go back to the beginning of the layout. All right, so that's quite cool how that layers. Now the next benefit that you have of that is now you have complete design freedom with regards to this text as well. You can go and do whatever you want with it. How cool is that? 
So this should be able to allow you to create a lot more uh, exciting designs, ones that can stick out from other people's designs that they do. Yeah. Um, rather than just having this next over here, you can go and create something cool. I don't know. Let's go 2020 and 2020. Ooh, 2020. All right, and we make the next links text. Let's change that color to, I don't know, some deep purple. There we go. <laughs> I'm not going to win any design. All right, and there we go. Now we have some cool styling on the next button there as well all right so that as i've stated over and over and i'm probably sounding like a stuck record this gives you so much creativity now that you can freedom of creativity that you can really go and build out these things as you want now the added benefit to this is you're not restricted to only building out blog layouts as i showed you earlier is that if we go back to that loop you have ones that you can build out media, you can build out projects and all these kinds. If you have WooCommerce installed, you can even do WooCommerce. So you're not restricted just to doing one little thing, but it applies to all. The only thing is that the process will remain the same. How you do it, how you implement it will be the same across all the ones that you implemented. Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover today with regards to the loop builder. I'm sure you can tell maybe in my voice, it's got a little bit, maybe an 5% extra excitement today with regards to this feature compared to my previous videos. And that is because I'm so happy that this is now finally out and is working. So the only thing also to remember is that you only get access to this in DV5. It's not available in DV4. And in DV5 also make sure that you go to update so that you get at least 19.1 public alpha. All right. Uh, before that, you're not going to get access to this. So make sure you update to at least this version. Okay. Other than that, I want you guys to hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found this useful. And if you did, remember just to hit the like button below because that keeps me motivated to create more content. Speaking of motivation, creating more content, I hope to create more content going forward. So if you found this useful, you want to know more, just hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any videos coming your way. Other than that, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.